For cleaning this machine, it is very easy. So first off, you wanna go ahead and remove the bobbin and remove any thread that you have in the thread. Now, instead of just taking the spool off and pulling, take some scissors, clip it at the top, and then pull the thread out the needle. That way, extra lint that you have gathered up near the foot isn't dragged up into the machine and up into those tension discs. Good habit to get into. Now, I don't say that you have to do that when you're embroidering. That, uh, the embroidery thread is a lot cleaner, but if you are using a lot of cotton threads, you're doing a lot of quilting, working with linty fabrics, definitely take the time to do that, clipping at the top and pulling out the needle. Next, you need your screwdriver and your cleaning brush. So I like to take the foot off, that gives that me a little bit more room, and then also take out the needle. So go ahead and loosen that. And if it's been a while since you've changed your needle, use this time to put a new needle back in when you get there. So next, you notice there's no screws on this throat plate. You take your screwdriver and you can lift at either one of these corners here and just give it a little uh, twist and it pops off. So first off is the throat plate. Next is this little guy. He's loose, he's just sitting here. He's kind of a U shape and that's kind of a little cover. So he'll come off next. Now I'm gonna tell you or fair warn, I have used this machine a lot and it needs a little cleaning. So when we see inside here, you can just lift this up. This is the bobbin case. Yep, there's the lint. It's gonna gather all in this kind of um, basket area. Here's the hook that, that spins around. It's very sharp and that's what uh, brings your thread up. So go ahead and get in here. Do not blow into this machine and that also goes for do not use canned air. Canned air is going to blow more of this into the back than you realize. So it's, it's actually too strong. This is also the um, cutter. So if you touch the selective thread cutter button, you can see that that actually will move from side to side. So if there's ever any thread in there, your machine will tell you, hey, there's thread caught down below. You can look down here and if there's with some you need to get out, you can push the button and kind of cycle through and let that kind of get back into position. This is one of my other favorite things. It's called a dust it. You can get in here. It's like a Swiffer for your sewing machine. Really get in and clean that all out. So, and as you can see, even after using my brush, this really cleaned out, um, kind of just absorbs all the other lint. And that is looking 10 times better. I do see some extra lint still down in this area. Oh yeah. And so as you do this, you want to do this about every three to four bobbins that you're sewing through because it really is going to start to pile up. Uh, fleeces and flannels tend to be very linty fabrics. And two, if you pick thread that's very linty, that's gonna just be kind of a culprit and you're just gonna always need to be cleaning. But what's nice is you don't actually have to do any type of oiling. This machine, whoa. <laughs> this machine is actually has some space age material on your different areas um, that kind of just keeps everything lubricated. And they did that because people were not oiling their machines as often as they should. So they fixed the problem and, and made it so we didn't have to oil. So yay. And then, but you do wanna take your machine in on a regular basis. Uh, we always say once a year to your local Husqvarna Viking dealer. And then that way they can go in and do all the other maintenance and adjustments that need to be done because over time in use, you're definitely going to find that the machine loosens up and, and it just needs a little bit of tweaking, just like your car does. A little oil change from here and there uh, makes so much difference, especially in the total life of your machine. So, all right, I just can continue on cleaning here. I do want to show you one more thing once I, after I put these all back together is one more place that needs to be, that can be checked or if you have any troubles, it's going to be up near the take up lever. So follow me. I'm going to reassemble here. We're going to call that good enough. And I, I love this machine. It's been my machine I've had at home lately. So uh, hey, if it's home and I have all the cool features, I'm gonna use it. So we're gonna put this back in. Notice that the bobbin case has two little fingers here, little arms, so go ahead and push those in, kind of just lay those in. This bobbin case will kind of rock back and forth, but you can tell it's sitting in there flat with the metal part. And then we're gonna reverse our order. So this goes in next. Then you just put the little lower nub in first. So put that there and that just lays into place. And the last thing is your throat plate. It has also a little nub. We're gonna line that up with the back part of our machine. And this with two fingers, press firmly down on both sides. Click, 
and then we can go ahead and put our foot back on. I always put my foot back on before I put a needle back in because then that way I have a location of where that needle needs to line up, meaning where that little uh, place is. So if you use your multi-purpose tool, drop that needle down. Notice it's, it's shaped like a D, the flat side is on the back, so it keeps my needle flat side to the back. I'm gonna lower that down the middle of my foot, so in that opening, that's why I put my foot on first, and then bring that straight up. So once I do a straight up here, and then I can use my screwdriver to tighten. Now I wanna make sure that I get that needle as high as it's possible to go. And the way I know I have put it in all the way is when my needle threader lines up. So when you're done, you go to rethread the machine. Make sure you use the needle threader and then that will be the, the way to know that that was correct. So I'm gonna reposition the camera, let you see one more thing that you can get into the machine and take a look at and um, if you need to do a little cleaning. The last part is right here. You can actually take this part off. If you just take your finger from the bottom and lift straight up, this will unattach and this little part here will be really easy. Just line that back up to the top. There's really only one way that goes in and push straight down. But what you can do is you can see inside the machine and they'll always tell you should actually um, turn the machine off. But if you ever get any thread caught up here and you, you realize, oh gosh, I need to get in there. Not that you really need to clean anything because there's usually not gonna be too much lint in here, but just gently you can get in and remove anything that you do see. Um, sometimes those tension discs, that's what you see right in this area. You can give it a little bit of a, uh, sweep through there. Just make sure um, everything is really clean and yep, perfect. So I love the ability that we can get into that part and then reposition that little unit back over before you go ahead and do any re-threading. So re-thread the machine, put your bobbin back in, put that new needle in if you didn't already, and then test out your machine make sure it is good to go. So once again, you wanna do this about every two to three bobbins, because it doesn't take much for things to get a lot of lint. And then also too, once a year, take it into your Husqvarna Viking dealer for its annual cleaning.